Hello everybody, Armature Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at small block forwards. We've got a 302, a 306, a 347, and a 363 inch stroker motor. And here's the question for today. Actually, before we get to that, please make sure, do the right thing. Like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. So you get notified when I do all this testing. Everybody knows that when we go up in displacement, like we go from a 302 to a 347, we're going to add power. We're certainly going to add torque, but we're also going to add power because bigger is better. But here's the question. What about specific output? When we increase the displacement, we make it harder for things like the cylinder head and the camshaft to keep up and continue the specific output that we got on the smaller motor. So what things do we need to change to not only increase the power when we go to a bigger motor, but improve specific output. Okay guys, let's jump right in and take a look not only at what happens when we go up in displacement on small block forwards, but also what happens when we improve the specific output or how much power each combination makes per cubic inch of displacement. So we're going to start off with a stock one, and this actually was unlike most of the motors that I do. This did not come from a wrecking yard. This was actually a new or at least rebuilt 302, but you can see it didn't really gain anything from, from being brand new. It's a common question I get. Richard, how much less are the motors that you get from the wrecking yard making than a if you were to completely rebuild one with new rings and bearings and all that stuff? And honestly, <laughs> if we get a good one from the wrecking yard, they make the same as a brand new one. So this combination came from the guys at Marshall Engines, basically just a cheap rebuilder special. It had a stock four eyebrow piston, <coughs> excuse me, it had the stock E7TE heads with stock valve springs. We would later upgrade those to put a camshaft in it. But this had the stock camshaft, stock springs. We did not run the factory EFI intake manifold on here. What we did was install a dual plane uh, intake manifold and a 650 Holley carburetor, an MSD distributor, and engine 7 8 long tube headers. Kind of the way that we run all of these carbureted small blocks when we run them on the engine dyno and run in that configuration Whoa. our otherwise stock ish 302 produced 258 horsepower and 328 foot pounds of torque now here's what happens when we upgrade these things and 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 try to improve the specific output because right now this combination is making 0.85 horsepower per cubic inch or not even one horsepower per cubic inch but how do we improve that well we do the same things that we always do we add heads cam and intake manifold on here and here's what we did in fact, this one was actually a little bit bigger than 302. It was a 306 because it had a, it also had a piston upgrade on it. But this thing also had uh, a good size camshaft in it. We didn't run the 274 cam that we normally run. I ran a 282, which is slightly bigger. And I'll go ahead and put the specs up here for that. We ran a, a dual plane intake manifold, uh, an RPM air gap. We ran a set of airflow research 165 heads on this and not the not the bigger 185s this combination was run way back in the day same long tube headers same msd distributor um and and, and honestly even though we switched the intake manifold still dual plane still divided still you know with the um cut out in the divider so they're they're going to be fairly similar if anything um and we ran a slightly larger 750 carburetor on this thing, but run in this manner, our 306 inch motor produced 400 horsepower, 399.2, 390, yeah, 399.2. So just under 400 horsepower, peak torque checked in at 370 foot pounds. If we do the math on this little 306 inch motor with a modified head scam and intake manifold, this thing had, uh, it had, did have a flat top piston with valve release that allowed us to run enough camshaft in this thing. I see that 282 camshaft. But running this manner, if we look at the specific output, we made 1.3 horsepower per cubic inch, which is a pretty good amount. Um, you know, a 400 horsepower 302 or 306 is a pretty good, like, streetable combination. Still making good power, still making decent torque, still kind of drivable, although for me, if I was running this thing on the street, I probably wouldn't pick that 282 cam. I would pick a 274 cam, something slightly smaller, to add more low-speed power and drivability. But we know that we can make 400 horsepower. It's got the good airflow research heads on it. Got a dual-plane intake manifold, and this our RPM range. If you were running a combination like this, you definitely would pick the dual plane because this is like 62 or 6300 RPM and below, which is where a dual plane is definitely going to excel. But now let's see what happens when we step up to an even larger displacement. 
Okay, guys, we've taken a look at what happens when we take a stock 302 and then modify it with heads, cam, and intake. And what we did was, although we did increase the displacement a little bit from 302 to 306, what we did was dramatically increase the specific output of it by increasing the power output. Now, obviously, we're making power at a higher engine speed. We went from 0.85 horsepower per cubic inch up to 1.3 horsepower per cubic inch. But now let's step up both in displacement and specific output by we're going to take a look at a 347 inch motor and you can see here's the power output i'm going to slide myself over so you can still see the stock one so you can see the three blues stock 306 and 347 i'll go ahead and label those and the three reds stock 306 and 347 Pretty easy to differentiate those because there's such a dramatic difference in power. But our 347 inch motor had the following combination. We had a scat rotating assembly on the 347. And uh, I take that back. That was a, a coast high performance. So this, was, so this one was back in the day. We had a coast high performance short block. We had a trick flow CNC 185 heads. We had a Summit Racing uh, uh, hydraulic roller camshaft that was a 236, 248 at 50, a four, uh, 574, 595 lift, 110 degree lobe separation angle. Kind of like the specs on that uh, 236 comp cam that I use a lot, but, but a tighter LSA. This thing worked fairly well. This one had Trick Flow 1.6 roller rockers on it. We had a Mylodon oily oil pan and windage tray and stuff and uh, hooker headers. We had a 750 Holley on this and a it's showing that this had a victor jr but this thing actually had a dual plane rpm air gap on this thing as well the thing that that helped this obviously we went up in displacement so in order to uh, continue with the same specific output you know we we have to run the same combinations but to in improve the specific output like we did with the 302 combination we have to change things that are not only going to add power like displacement did because it's always going to add horsepower and torque but we have to improve it beyond that. So we need to have even you know, more head flow unless the cylinder head already had enough flow to support the added power. But one thing we do need to do is we need to go up in uh, camshaft and up in compression, and we did exactly that on this combination. So on our 347, we ended up making 482 horsepower. Good. And peak torque was up as well, 423 foot-pounds of torque. You could see that, uh, you know, when we go to a 302 or 306 to a 347, we add lots of torque, and we would do that almost regardless of what happens with the uh, big end of the combination, where camshaft and cylinder head flow and those kinds of things would actually make a difference. But this thing made good power. In fact, we made, uh, on this 347, we made 1.39 horsepower per cubic inch. So not only did we increase the displacement, we also improved the specific output. So now I'll take one more step up. I ran another stroker combination. This was a 363 inch motor and this was a dart shp short block so it was a big bore and what we had was the 347 3.4 inch stroke or crank on this thing 4125 bore here's what happened when we ran our 363 and so did we do did we just increase the displacement where everything else was the same no that's not what we did in order to achieve a specific output of 1.56 horsepower per cubic inch this combination produced 566 horsepower and 484 foot-pounds of torque. So what did we do? We did the same thing that we did with the, going from the 306 to the 347. We increased the static compression on this thing. We were running a flat top piston, but because it was bigger, meaning we had more static compression, we ran a much bigger camshaft in this thing, and the camshaft is gonna help dictate where this thing makes power and ultimately how much power it made. We also stepped up in in cylinder head flow on this thing, we ran uh, a set of Dart Pro 1 210 CNC heads, so bigger port volume, lots of flow. These things flowed, I think, over 300 CFM on the 210s, and enough to support this kind of power level. I think we could support more than 600 horsepower with those. We ran a funnel web single plane intake manifold. We ran a bigger carburetor, a 950 Holley. We ran uh, the, the dyno headers that were actually a step header, inch and three quarter to inch and seven eighths. And uh, the cam research cam was a um, solid roller camshaft. It was a 725 lift, a 254, 260 degree duration, and 109 degree lobe separation angle. You can see we, we played with lash. And after doing that, you can see <laughs> we've stepped up from our stock 302 
to our modified 302, to our modified 347, and then finally to our modified 363. So not only did we step up in displacement on each one of these, even going from a 302 to a 306, we stepped up in specific output by changing the things that matter. You know, we did, and we did step up in displacement, but we also stepped up in compression and camp timing, and in some cases, intake manifold and carburetor. Armature older, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.